Welcome back, visual politic fans. These days, the Franco German axis continues to lead Europe, but now the balance of power has shifted. Angela Merkel had to deal with four different French presidents. However, with the German Chancellor bowing out, French positions are gaining strength in Brussels. The more incisive discourse that the European Union is adopting in foreign policy is an example of this influence. But above all, it is the energy transition that is at the center of the EU debate. The energy transition, and one key question how on earth can we make economies grow while accelerating decarbonization? decarbonisation and reducing CO2 emissions. And while searching for an answer, the President of France, Emmanuel Macron, made this announcement that meant nothing less than breaking with the prevailing political discourse of recent years. Pour garantir l'indépendance énergétique de la France, pour garantir l'approvisionnement électrique de notre pays et atteindre nos objectifs, en particulier la neutralité carbone en 2050, nous allons pour la première fois depuis des décennies, relancer la construction de réacteurs nucléaires dans notre pays. The announcement, despite coming at a time of high energy price tensions, was surprising insofar as the latest nuclear power plants being built by Electricité de France are causing nothing but problems. So the question is, why is Macron betting on nuclear power? Is the new generation of nuclear power plants the solution to climate change? And more importantly for everyone, will this decision have consequences for the rest of the European Union? Today on Visual Politic, we are going to answer these questions. But first, let's take a look at a bit of history. Europe's nuclear power. France's relationship with nuclear energy goes back a long way. The French scientist, Henri Becquerel, discovered radioactivity, and the most significant research into its properties was carried out by Pierre and Marie Curie. But we still had to wait several decades to take advantage of nuclear power as a source of energy. Specifically, it was not until 1954 when the first nuclear power plant in the world began to produce electricity. It was in the Soviet Union. At that time, nuclear power seemed to be the future. So these advances were soon adopted by other economic powers powers, the United Kingdom, the United States, and of course, France. It was already the 1960s, and most of the industrialized countries had built at least one experimental reactor. Little by little, new reactors were being developed, and that is how we came to the year 1973. By then, France had eight nuclear reactors in operation, in five different plants, with five more reactors under construction. And then, then came the oil crisis. <laughs> During the infamous 1973 crisis, the price of oil multiplied by four after the Arab countries decided to reduce their production. At that time, most of the electricity in France, a country with no oil fields of its own, was generated by oil fire powered stations, compared to just over 5% from the first generation of nuclear reactors. Therefore, the so-called oil crisis was the key to the activation of the Mesmer Plan. In March 1974, France presented to the world the plan with which it intended to break its complete dependence on foreign oil. The goal was to become the largest nuclear power in Europe. This plan envisaged building 80 nuclear power reactors in 10 years and reaching 170 by the year 2000. A plan that, if it had been completed, would have needed a whole edition of mega projects. However, visual politic fans, the final execution was more modest. 58 reactors were built on 19 different sites. But in any case, one goal was achieved. France is, after the United States, the country that produces the most nuclear energy in the world. And of course, for France, it is its largest source of electricity generation. Practically, 70% of French electricity is of nuclear origin, the highest percentage in the world. What's more, given France's standing in the European Union, its 56 operational reactors contribute significantly to the fact that almost a third of the electricity consumed in the EU is of nuclear origin. And of course, as it is an energy that is generated without emitting carbon into the atmosphere, France wants to promote nuclear energy to fight against global warming. And well, yes, I know what many of you are thinking. Well, Josh, renewables also produce electricity without emitting CO2. But of course, the issue is that, as you know, wind and solar depend on weather conditions. What happens when the wind doesn't blow? Well, the answer to that question is something that we have seen in 2021, all over Europe, when even the dirtiest of energy sources had to be used. 
Germany. Coal tops wind as primary electricity source. Well, unlike renewables, nuclear offers a stable electricity production. What's more, its price is barely affected by fluctuations in the cost of uranium. Of course, as you will know, it is also has its drawbacks. Nuclear waste management is one of them. And I'm not talking only about safety, but also about cost. For example, in France itself, the cost of the Sigeo project, a deep geological repository for radioactive waste, is now estimated at around $45 billion, a far cry from the $28 billion initially forecast. A huge investment, which, however, is only the tip of the iceberg. The Mesmer Plan led to approximately 80% of France's nuclear reactors being built between the late 1970s and the 1980s. With a useful life of 40 years, this means that either we invest now in their renovation so that their continued operation is guaranteed, or we have to face their decommissioning. Either option would cost France tens of billions of dollars. Specifically, two EDF estimates, the decommissioning of the reactors would cost about $85 billion, while the option of updating and overhauling the plants in order to continue operating for a few more decades would amount to about $50 billion. And it is the latter that the French government has finally opted for. But take note, because for the moment, France is regulated by law that its nuclear capacity will never exceed 63.2 gigawatts. So unless there is a legislative change, any new reactor, which is what the French president has announced, would mean the closure of an old one. That remains to be defined. In any case, there is another interesting question. The French nuclear industry has had a lot of problems in recent years. So the question is, is it really ready for the Macron plan? Listen up. Hard times. In order to talk about nuclear energy in France, we have to look at three letters. EDF, the acronym for Electricité de France. We are talking about the public company that owns the French nuclear power plants and supplies electricity to France as if it had a virtual monopoly. It also owns Framatome, the nuclear reactor business that the company acquired in 2018 from Arriva, another state-owned company that was forced to restructure in the face of the problems the French nuclear industry has undergone over the past decade. In 2016, France's nuclear regulator ordered 21 reactors, more than a third of EDF's nuclear fleet, to be shut down after Arriva acknowledged defects in 400 parts manufactured since 1965 and used in the steam generators. Inspectors were concerned about high levels of carbon found in steel from the Le Croissot Forge, with a risk of steel fractures in the event of a sudden change in temperature. What happened then was a good illustration of what could happen if France suddenly gave up its nuclear plants. Thermal power plants started burning coal at a rate not seen since the 1980s. But wait a minute, because before we even consider the atmosphere, the slowdown in atomic generation was felt in the wallets of the French. price of electricity shot up by 40%. But take note, because it also rose in many of the European countries to which France exports its generated electricity. In 2017, things settled back down, but the joke did not come cheap. The French state-owned company estimated the impact on its accounts of the closure and repair of the plants at over a billion dollars. Worst of all, if this incident is already serious in itself, the big headache that still plagues EDF today is the European pressurized reactor, the EPR, a third generation pressurized water reactor that, at the beginning of the century, was presented as the star project of the French nuclear industry. Years have passed, and currently, there are only two EPRs in operation. They are in China, and one has already been shut down. Between 2022 and 2023, other EPRs are scheduled to start operating in Finland and France, specifically at the Flamanville nuclear power plant. I could tell you about all the problems that the Flamanville EPR has had, but it would be better if the French Minister of Economy, Bruno Lamarie, told you. Je rappelle que le réacteur de Flamanville devait coûter un peu plus de 3 milliards d'euros et sa construction devait durer 4 ans et demi. Il coûtera 4 fois plus cher et sa construction durera 15 ans. C'est un échec pour toute la filière électronucléaire française.
As the minister said, all these problems and cost overruns have been a serious blow to France's reputation in the field of nuclear energy. Years ago, the United Kingdom was the main interested party in continuing to invest in nuclear energy and installing the EPRs of the French state-owned company. Things are different today. Yes, a project has been approved, but not surprisingly, the British are losing the desire to place more orders. The two EPR reactors slated to expand the Hinkley Point nuclear power plant are several years behind schedule and millions in cost overruns. Their cost has risen to $30.5 billion and they will not enter service until 2026. The approval of two more EDF EPR reactors for the Sizewell plant is still up in the air. It seems that in the end, they will be inclined to give the green light to the project after 10 years of debate. Meanwhile, the UK and Rolls-Royce have just announced a $528 million investment to develop and design a new generation of smaller nuclear reactors. We are talking about the SMR, Small Modular Reactor, with a power that does not exceed 300 megawatts, compared to the more than 1,000 megawatts of conventional reactors. The interesting thing is that Rolls-Royce assures that smaller will be synonymous with fewer problems. SMRs are expected to be cheaper and faster to build than existing reactors. Their cost is estimated at $2.9 billion, with expectations of a future reduction to $2.38 billion. The SMRs are designed to be mass-produced from a factory and then transported to their final location. Their construction, which would take three to four years, promises to be simpler than EPR reactors, which take more than 10 years to complete. France is also keeping a close eye on SMR developments. A month before announcing the construction of new reactors, Macron pledged an investment of over $1 billion for the development of these SMRs. There has been some confusion because some media went so far as to link the two announcement. However, it is far from clear that this is the case. It is, in fact, very likely that the Macron plan corresponds more to what was set out by a report commissioned by his own government that was leaked in 2018. Nuclear. A report recommends the construction of six new EPRs. These six EPRs are expected to cost a third less than the Flamanville EPR, and $56.5 billion is expected to be enough to build them all. The aim would be to take advantage of economies of scale. EDF claimed that its next EPRs will benefit from cost reductions, as more copies of the same design are built, an advantage that the current projects have not been able to take advantage of. At least, this is the theory. For it to become a reality, technological developments will be necessary. But more importantly, France will need to succeed in the battle it's waging in Brussels. And this is another key point. Welcome to the bureaucracy of the European community. Quid pro quo. The European Union is about to take a vital decision to tackle the fight against climate change. The matter under discussion is the so-called taxonomy. I'm sure many of you know that taxonomy in biology is responsible for classifying animals and plants according to their characteristics. Well, what the European Commission is trying to do here is to decide whether energy sources are classified as environmentally sustainable. The idea is that taxonomy of energy sources will become a guiding principle for the European Union in deciding which industries can be subsidized. The taxonomy is also intended to guide financial markets in assessing which energy sources are worth investing in. So the future is at stake, whether it's access to subsidies and cheap capital or much more complicated financing if excluded. As you can imagine, France is fighting with all its might to get nuclear energy into Brussels' plans. And the most important thing is that they are not alone. Along with France, Bulgaria, Croatia, Slovakia, Slovenia, Finland, Hungary, Poland, the Czech Republic, and Romania have taken a stand. In addition, these countries were also supported by the Netherlands and Sweden at the last Council of Energy Ministers. We are talking about 12 of the 27 members of the European Union. But hold on a minute, because other countries are not ready to roll out the red carpet for nuclear energy. The opposition group is led by Germany, which in 2022 will complete the nuclear shutdown it announced after the Fukushima accident. It is joined by Austria, Luxembourg, Denmark, Portugal, and Spain. And in fact, what Berlin is doing is fighting for natural gas to be classified as environmentally sustainable because it emits less CO2 than burning coal, which is currently one of its main sources of energy. Now, the ball is in the court of the European Commission, which obtained from the European institutions a delegated act to define the framework of the taxonomy. And what does the commission think? This is is what President Ursula von der Leyen said at the end of October. 
it's obvious that we need more renewable and clean energy. Alongside this, we need a stable source, nuclear, and during the transition, of course, natural gas. And this is why, as we've already stated as a commission in April, we will come forward with our taxonomy proposal. This taxonomy proposal will be presented as a delegated act. There are only two ways for it not to go ahead, either a majority of the European Parliament or a qualified majority of the European Council will vote against it. This does not look like any easy task. The question is, will Brussels be prepared to stand up to Berlin? So everything indicates that we will find ourselves with a quid pro quo agreement. In other words, something in exchange for something. You know, Germany gives in on one side, France gives in on the other. The European Commission will classify both gas and nuclear as environmentally sustainable, and everyone will be happy. Made in Brussels diplomacy in its purest form. But now, the question is over to you. Do you think France will finally get Brussels' blessing for nuclear energy? And would you like your country to implement a plan to build new nuclear reactors as well? You can leave your answers in the comments. And as always, if you found the video interesting, please like it. Don't forget to subscribe to Visual Politic, and all the best. I'll see you next time.